If you happened to be interested in flies around April 2011 and were in the market for a particular book by Peter A. Lawrence, you would have been out of luck. It just so happened that The Making of a Fly, The Genetics of Animal Design was selling for a whopping $1.7 million. If you did pay the full price of $1.7 million, you actually would have gotten it for a steal. The value of the book continued to climb until it reached $23 million. Finally, after about 30 days, Professor Nathan noticed the problem, put his book back to $106, and soon after, 40 books price predictably set to $134. Jokes aside though, what caused this book to go up in value several hundred times its original price? A feedback loop created by competing algorithms, and incredibly simple ones at that. Sometime during the day, the seller Professor Nathan's price was set to 0 0.9983 times that of Bordy Book's price. Bordy Book's price was set to 1.2705 times Professor Nathan's. This is likely because the book in question wasn't being sold by too many sellers. Thus, Bordy Book simply sold the book for 1.2 times its closest competitor, while Professor Nathan sold it for 0.9983 times the highest price, looking to undercut its closest competitor. Without any intervention, starting at $100, after 60 days, the price would have soared to $156 million. Just for fun, if it had been left on for 90 days, it would have reached $195 billion. That is almost 20% of Amazon's market cap, the sum of all Amazon's stock. While this can be used as an example of robots out of control, I feel ironically this is an example of the dangers of everything running as intended, or at least as far as the algorithm is concerned. Algorithms do exactly what they are told to do, with what they are given. To these algorithms, pricing the book at millions of dollars made sense because, well, that's what their competitors were pricing it at. This is an example of bad data going in and bad data coming out. You don't want bad data, but sometimes it's inevitable because, well, Data isn't bad, it's objective, that's why sanity checks are important. Having a failsafe built into the program to put up a red flag when certain conditions are met is essential to avoiding a cascade like this. As Wall Street showed us in 2011, with the infamous high frequency trading flash crash, that cascade can end up costing you millions of dollars. For example, you could have an algorithm that buys when line A crosses line B. You see this works very well and leave it to its own devices. However, one day there is the tiniest of crosses. This triggers the algorithm to place an order. Doing so actually could push the line back under due to low volume or liquidity. This could trigger a sell or another natural cross where your algorithm will buy again, causing it to bounce around wildly until you're either broke or the loop breaks. This is a rather obvious example that could be fixed with some simple checks. However, it can be really hard to cover everything. So just remember that value is in the eye of the beholder. So make sure your program has a good eye. But that's gonna be it for this video. If you like this video and wanna see more like it, feel free to subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. I answer DMs or tags way faster, way easier. Other than that, I will see you guys next time.